All right. Hey, gang. So I hope you've learned a lot throughout the week so far. As David mentioned, we have a lot of great sessions coming up. I am going to share with you a little bit of how I use Fibonacci. Um, my name is Tony Hansen. For those of you that are just joining us, I've been trading since the mid-1990s online. And uh, I come from a background of uh, archaeology and the arts and science. So for me, looking at charts and taking more of a technical analysis view of the market always just kind of came second nature to me. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of education out there when I started trading online. People were just starting to come off of the floors. Floors were still pretty popular. And so a lot of what was out there was just really simplistic. Um, so what I did was I basically took the charts as a viewpoint of human psychology uh, in the form of a chart. And once you think of it that way, you know, we are very predictable uh, creatures, creatures of habit. And when we look at the charts, all we're really seeing is just a visual representation of fear and greed and uncertainty. And uh, as I was digging into using technical analysis, I, I came originally starting with candlestick charting. Um, most of the charting I use these days is a combination between candlestick stick and line charting. A lot of line charting just because it smooths the markets. I started out as a swing trader in equities. And uh, these days I predominantly trade futures just because that's what works best with my lifestyle. So over the, you know, the past couple of decades, I've traded many different markets, uh, many different time frames, And my system of analysis is one where it, it doesn't really matter what I'm trading or when I'm trading. I can trade at three in the morning or I can trade, you know, here in after hours. For example, I uh, took a trade a couple of minutes ago on, on the ES. And what I've found is that trying to use a lot of indicators in my trading was almost counterproductive because a lot of folks teach you to rely really heavily on just indicators, using those as like your trigger points and your execution points. And the way I think of indicators is just um, like another check, another check in the checkbox of uh, what is favorable or unfavorable about a strategy. So I use price action to develop different strategies in the market. And then I use Fibonacci as an extra confirmation tool that can help me really understand the time development and the price development of a security to really narrow down those do or die points, the points that we wanna to use to get into a position and execute upon a position. In particular, we are going to be looking at Fibonacci fans in this class. This is not a tool that as many traders of Fibonacci use. You're most likely to um, be familiar with things like Fibonacci price extensions or retracement levels. You know, those are going to be the most common tools that we use. Um, but I like to use Fibonacci fans because they're combining not just price, but also a time aspect to our trading. So they're giving us these points in time for a trigger point. So Fibonacci fan, you can even see one drawn up here on my uh, little image up in the corner, is we're looking at a particular trend in the market. So for example, on this chart, let me change a color here. You're looking at the bottom of this, just a two wave uptrend here. And I'm going and I'm taking my Fib fan from the low to that high. And then this is going to place these different fan levels that you might be used to using when you're looking at Fibonacci retracements, like your 23.6, your 38.2, uh, 50%, 61.8%. You're gonna run into all of those same Fib levels, but they're gonna be as a fan formation. Now, I'm going to show you a lot of different examples of how we use Fib fans, and I'm gonna try to keep it 
pretty basic to start with. So when I dive into looking at the markets, I take an approach of where I'm looking at what I call the building blocks of price development. And think of it like this as ingredients that go into a recipe. So if I want a recipe for like a bowl, a bowl flag, for example, these are the different ingredients that I need to see and I need to have them present. And if I don't, then my bull flag isn't going to turn out very well. It might be flat. It might just not raise at all. So that's kind of the line of thinking that we're looking at here. So your Fibonacci fans are an extra ingredient that are going to improve your odds on a particular setup. I'll actually show you the ES trade here in just a couple of minutes that I just took. Um, and you'll see that live. But if we go forward here on the next slide, whoops, one too far. This is this morning's action. So this morning in the NASDAQ, I had missed the open coming into the day. I'd missed that original kind of drop coming out of it. But what you'll notice is that we've got this really kind of steady uptrend throughout pre-market trading. So this is 5 a.m. Eastern. And then we're up into about 9.30 here. And around the open, that's where things started to shift and we ended up getting this really substantial pullback. You'll notice I've actually got two types of Fibonacci on here. I've got Fibonacci retracement levels. Those are these horizontal lines. And if we look at them, starting from zero here, this would be your 23.6, 38.2, 15.1, Sixty-one point eight, seventy-six point four, and then you've got your hundred percent up here. So retracing against those, you're looking at twenty-three point six, thirty-eight point two, fifty percent, sixty-one point eight, and then seventy-six point four. So you're looking at the retracement of that upswing on the way back down. So what was interesting here this morning was that as the market was coming down, we saw a pretty strong drop here into the 76.4% purple Fibonacci retracement level. Now the Fib fan comes into play when we take a Fib fan uh, tool and we go from this low end of the trading range, the trading channel, up into the upper end of this trend. And that's going to put these fib fans on here. So we've got your 23.6, you've got your 38.2, 50%, 61.8, and then 76.4 as your fib fan levels. So those are these angled levels that are happening here. And when we're looking at Fibonacci fan retracements, it is really common that as long as our trend is average momentum to slightly stronger than average, slightly weaker than average momentum, these fib fan levels hold really well where 76.4 has a really high probability of giving us a bounce. So another way we would use it would be if this is our uptrend here, You'll also see situations where you'll get these two wave corrections, whether it's a bull flag or it's the first continuation. So taking your fib fan from that low to that high, that 76.4%, my line's not drawn very well, over here is going to serve as a really good zone to get a full continuation type of move. So in this morning, I was just using it for bounce, just getting a little kind of initial pop coming off of that low and then doing the continuation when it double tapped it. What you'll notice though is that as this goes higher, we're not only seeing reactions off of the Fib fan levels, but you're also seeing continued reactions off of those Fibonacci retracement levels too. So you've kind of got this double double whammy each time the market hits one of those levels where both of those are kind of co coinciding with each other. So you can see coming back down here again, that 76.4%, which is our fan level, again, serves as support, helps things move higher into midday here today. 
So you can get really close to narrowing absolute lows and absolute highs when you are using Fibonacci. And the interesting thing about Fibonacci is that we can make adjustments with it where um, even if I don't have my levels put the same place somebody else does, they can still line up pretty closely. So you might change a fan level, for example, and one person might have it hitting a 61.8, another person has it hitting 76.4, because as you're changing things and shifting them, they're still corresponding and lining up. And I'll show you what I mean here by this in just a second. So these fan levels are going to be used as kind of key zones of where we want to look to take a trade. Now, I mentioned earlier that it's really crucial you look at the momentum of the trend. So for example, if you've got a trend that has stronger than average momentum, meaning if we look at kind of average trend movement back and forth here, this starts to be stronger than average right here. Here we've got a little bit weaker again. So this is stronger than average. So if we take a Fib fan from that low to this high, and we're looking at fan support as a zone that would allow this to have a measured move as a continuation, that's going to be really difficult. First of all, this pulls back more than 50% of the rally. So those previous highs become a strong resistance level. But because that momentum is so strong, there's a better chance it's going to try to go into more of a range instead. So if this was something we were looking to put a Fib fan on, I would actually end up going from the low to the high over here because now I've got a movement with a trend that I've got a little bit more of that average momentum coming into play. It's not too extreme now at this point. And then that would provide support somewhere right around here as a trigger level. So if this pulled back into here, that would be something that we could then look for for a continuation on the upside. So you'll notice that that fan zone coming up here, let me switch the slide and you'll actually see it on the next slide. Here. So this would be where that 76.4% would be. So it would be telling you basically how long you need to wait in terms of time development going this way, but it's also gonna give you a good price support for new setup too. And if you're combining that with a retracement level like 61.8% Fibonacci retracement would be right about there, then that's going to add even greater support for that Fib fan level. Now, let me show you what this looks like when we go put it into action. So I'm gonna take you over to our slide of the NASDAQ here. Um, for those of you, how many of you are trading on NinjaTrader? NinjaTrader does not have fans built in. So I ended up uh, developing uh, an indicator to plug into NinjaTrader. I'll give you a link for that here in a little bit. But most platforms do have it built in. So they're pretty standard in terms of what they look like. Uh, trading views a little bit different. I think they use like 75% instead of 76.4. But they're still in the same general zone. Let me pull up my ES chart here for you guys. So here is the ES this morning. And you'll see where that bigger fib fan came into play in just a minute. I'm going to remove the drawing tool here. Whoops, wrong button. And I'll show you how to add the fan to our chart here. So the indicator that I developed, if you go up to your tools here, it plugs into your drawing tool. So Fibonacci fan is down here. So if we go and we just look at that first initial impulse move on the upside, that is a much stronger than average momentum move. So this is typically not where I would want to be drawing my Fib fan from. I would want to pull it over to this high or even over to here as a support level. What you'll notice is there's still some support that does hit, 
we still get a reaction off of 61.8, and there is still a reaction off 76.4%, but it's not able to do a move where it hits a measured move. So if you're going from here and you're looking for that measured move on the upside, it can't make it up to that 100% very easily. So if we look for a trend that has a little bit more of an average momentum, we pull this fib fan over, hook it up to the next high. Now we've got a nice midway correction. We've got a better trend. We've got a nice two wave trend move. A lot of trends take place in waves of two. So if you're also looking at this as a bigger two wave correction with a megaphone, you have this measured move over here too. So this is coming into that 76.4% FIP fan again. So this now becomes a major do or die spot to drop down to the smaller time frames to look for a setup. And this is the same zone where everything took off this morning. So that original slide that I showed you where we had the FIB fan on that larger time frame, I believe it was, um, let me see here. I can actually go back to it and show you, but this is the same slide, the same, uh, same chart here. Let me go up and grab it. I posted it in Telegram too for my traders. You'll see it in here. Hold on. Do, do, do. Right here. So this is that fan. So I actually posted it as it was kind of coming down into a retracement level here. And then here's our kind of original bounce coming off of it. So that low there, that is the same zone that we're looking at for your support over here too. So combining different retracement levels, like this is about the 50% Fibonacci retracement as well. Going from here to here, you've got a 50% retracement along with the 76.4% FIB fan. So what this does is on these bigger timeframes like the 4,000 tick on the ES, you can now drop down and look at a smaller timeframe for a strategy that is forming at those zones. So for example, this morning there was a double bottom. Um, I originally got into a uh, coming off of the first low, use the second low to build into the position for a continuation. If we look at the final shift on this, you'll notice that now this was a 76.4% when I had the high here. When I come to the next high, now it's the 61.8%. So this is where I was saying, sometimes you might pick a different level than another trader, and yet you'll both still come into support at the same zone. It just might have a different label on it. So 61.8 versus 76.4, it's still the band support. It's still a great area of support. So look at other things like the measured move, that's a major type of support level. You got the previous low zone, the zone where momentum started to shift over here is a support zone. And then of course you've got your Fibonacci price retracement of about 50% too coming together at that level as well. So all of these things are kind of working together here on this. So if we pull this over here, Go back to my class. Uh, for those of you that are on NinjaTrader, here is the link that you can use for um, the indicator as a plugin. It's really simple to just plug it in. And I'll show you uh, some more examples on our charts here in a minute. I am actually going to protect my ES trade here. And I'll show that to you too. Let me grab that chart. I slid it behind 
the screen here. So I got to find it again. It's hiding. Here we go. So if we go to, I'm on 10 second chart. So what you'll notice here, I'll make this bigger. And so we had this pretty strong uptrend throughout the morning. Here again is uh, the support that I was using for the initial low this morning. And then here, as we were coming into after hours, you'll see that we've got this rounding off happening here and then this pop. So this is where I went and you can go and add your Fib fan on this. And I used an advanced level of Fib fan on here. So if you do have the extreme momentum move, we can't use a Fib fan from this low to this high. So if you've got two highs that are relatively the same, you can go and pull that Fib fan over to your second high. So this is one way that we can make an adjustment when that momentum is too extreme. So if you've got a second high, use that second high instead there. And then what that does is that gives you your next level to watch for, that 76.4%. And you'll notice I have a little bit of a cushion zone. So one of the FIB levels that traders don't use as much is 78.6. So I have that buffer zone between 78.6 and 76.4. That's basically the zone that I want to use for my entry triggers. And I'll use a little bit of that extra cushion for where I'm placing my stop in there. So this happened after the markets reopened here this evening. And you'll notice that along with that Fib fan as support, I've got a nice two wave correction. I've got two waves of correction within that second wave of correction. And I've got a slower overall trading channel. So you guys will probably recognize this as a cup with handle. And I also call the handle portion a phoenix. So all in all, everything is just working together really well for this setup. Um, I had my original exit at this 23.6% zone as a target level, because if you're coming off and looking for a continuation pattern, 76.4 is the zone that I want my trigger on the buy side to be coming off of. And then the 23.6% is the zone that I want to be looking at for a target level. And this is just the standard level. There's going to be exceptions where I look for more, zones where I look for less. Since we're in class here, this also happens to just correspond with the breakdown zone over here. And it's about probably a 76.4% retracement of this drop and about 61.8% of, of that bigger move there. So there's still room for this to move higher, but we've got three highs. So I went ahead and, and closed it here a second ago. You've also got a fairly measured move on the upside at this zone as well. I was a little bit shy of it perhaps when it first hit that fan there. So this is just one example, you know, live here as I was starting class of using it, but it uses a variation um, compared to what I was showing you guys a minute ago. Let me go back to that presentation here. And here is a basic look of the fib fan. So we've got a little, a lot of kind of choppiness here to start with. So I'm going to use that first low in there to the absolute high here. And if I'm looking at this momentum and comparing it to that previous downside move here, I basically have a V bottom. So that tells me my momentum is fairly close to average. So this is a good placement for where I would want that fib fan to be. So I'm going to go from the low to the high, and then that 76.4% becomes my zone for looking for a setup. On this particular day, I continue to use the fan where we have a nice little measured move on the pop side here, two wave correction again, and then that fan serves as support again. Now at this point, if you're 
still in kind of that lower zone of your downtrend, so your, your lower 50%, and you've got two waves of correction, what you want to see happening coming out of that second correction is for this to take off very, very strongly. So if it is not immediately taking off like that, you need to get more aggressive with your trade management because that means that you have more weakness that's likely to come into, into play. So in this case, it couldn't get that momentum coming in. It put in a two wave smaller measured move. So this actually triggered a reversal of the pattern as well. And now on that extra test of that fib fan, this is no longer true support. It's enough that it pauses it, but after that point, that fan would become resistance. So for example, if this comes back up into this level here, you could use that as a short trigger um, to continue the downside move. So it's like any other type of support or resistance where once it breaks, it once support breaks, it becomes a resistance level and vice versa. Uh, but you have it angled like you would a uh, trend line. So here's a really typical way that I will use the fib fan as a continuation of a reversal pattern. So you can see that momentum originally was really strong here, started to get a shift in the momentum. You've got a measured move here. We actually saw this exact same pattern on, gosh, was it the Dow overnight? I know I just saw it recently in my trading on one of the indices here, but it did that same kind of shift. It might've been the ES, but it did the same kind of shift up into the high. And what you'll notice is there's a stronger pop in the middle of this, but we have these two smaller levels. So this overall momentum of this pullback ends up being again about the same momentum as the upside. So for that, with our fib fan, I can just go from the absolute high to that low and then use that 76.4% as the level for initiating a new position on the short side. So that becomes a trigger zone to watch for. And then you can go down to your smaller time frames to look for like a break in a trading channel, um, a smaller strategy. It's like even this strategy, but on a smaller time frame would work as well. And you also have a, a bit of a decline in volume right in there. So that's nice to see that as well. A little bit of a larger time frame, 60 minute time frame. But let me show you how other things are coming into play here. So if we look at adding another type of Fibonacci, which is your Fibonacci um, time extension, then that can give us additional do or die points. So 100% extension between pivot levels when the momentum begins to shift, that's going to provide another do or die zone. So if our Fib fan is coming up and hitting at the same time as we have that 100% extension or measured move, then we're basically creating a head and shoulders pattern where our fib fan is serving as the zone that we would want to see the end of that right shoulder happen. So what that does is it helps protect us against an early setup where we might take a channel break, but it hasn't based long enough or given a correction long enough in terms of the time development to really support, support a downside move. And it also helps protect us from something where the base might go too far. So if it tries to break when it's too far, then it's more likely to be a trap too. What I consider to be too far if I'm looking at a Fibonacci time extension is if you're looking at the 23.6 so 123.6% in this case. On NinjaTrader, it shows up as 223.6. TradeStation is 123.6. Basically, it's just the extension of this move here out in this direction. So if it isn't moving and getting going by the time it's gotten to that 123.6%, it's probably not going to be able to get going. So that becomes a key FIB level to watch for in terms of getting that continuation going. So if this came here, for example, and then retested it immediately, as long as it's before that 23.6, that's 
still a good resistance level uh, to try to get that continuation on the downside going. If we continue to look at this, this Fib fan still is something where we can keep adding these on. So look at the distance between these highs and then where the third high hits. You've got fairly even spacing in terms of time development there as well. But if we then take that last move down, we can use Fib fans again. This might be airing a little bit more on the extreme move than I would what I would really like. So what I would do is I would take this as my first move, but if it's not hooking up and holding that initial zone there, I would go and drag my Fib fan over to this level and then look at that as the next resistance level. And usually that's where I would put my stop on something like this as well. Or if I tried it early and it couldn't get going, then that would be a secondary zone. So this one would have higher risk just because that first drop is a bit stronger than average. It's not as ideal compared to what we would like to see, but the time development on it is pretty nice. And another thing that comes into play here that helps it with this level is another type of time development. And that is looking at this correction. So the first fan that we drew was from here to here. That put the 76.4% here. So if we look at how long that time development is, we take it from this low and we put our box over there. That gives us a do or die spot for time development, again, for continuation. So in that case, this stronger FIB fan happens to hook up the best with that time development. And it's also a resistance level where the support here is now becoming a resistance level over here. Just be aware that as I was going into something like this, I would also be looking at that original FIB fan up here as an additional level of resistance too. If this continued to base out further here and did not break down here, let's say it went into a longer trading range, um, broke up through that fan level, then we would take our fit fan and we would look at here to here as our trend. And then that 76.4% over here would be our next do or die zone for a breakdown. So ideally, we want that to go right when we have that measured time development. If it does not go at that measured time development and it bases out further, so for example, I took the setup, but it's just, it can't get going. And it ends up giving me a trailing stop above that fib fan. What I would wanna do is I would now, instead of treating these as two separate waves on the downside, I would view that as one wave. And then I would be looking for a two wave correction here in green. So it gives me different do or die levels. First one here, and then I've got another one over here if that one doesn't get going. Absolutely go back and review these. Um, you can get even more advanced in terms of the FIB fan placement. I've spent years studying these things, you guys. So I have specific rules for how I move my FIB fans based upon the type of momentum I'm seeing. So like I said, if it's on the extreme side, my first instinct is to move it to the next low or the next high if it's at the high too. But there's additional rules that I will use as well. And what that does is it gives me these zones where my probability of success is going to be the highest if I get a trigger point at those levels. So I'm not just looking at the fan by itself. I'm also looking at other things like additional time development levels. So here again, you can do the same thing again. And also, since this is, again, a little bit more extreme, you could look at pulling that fan over to the second level to give you a little bit of a buffer zone, too. So if this doesn't go at this point, I might get flushed out and then end up in it again. But I would want to watch, again, the time development. So my best chance is if that time development is going to be the same. Now, since I already have three waves of selling here, 
my odds of getting a measured move compared to this wave or this wave of this or this wave is not going to be as strong. So the odds of this drop going and putting in a measured move down to here is not going to be as strong because I already have three waves of selling where the timing between each of those waves is the same. So if I'm on my third zone of timing, that's exactly the same. That can impact the follow through for this move. So you want to watch that one more carefully and be more aggressive in um, paying attention to that. Because even though this in this particular example, it went really well, that is not typically going to be the case. It can be the case where it gives you a false trigger, doubles out. So my time development goes to here. And then this is the next do or die spot right here. And then the other thing that can happen with our fib fan is we could take our high from here down to here. And then that's going to give us a 76.4% way out over there that can give us another do or die spot for the breakdown. So the this is a do or die spot the doubling out with the time development after we have two zones that are the same or three waves. And you definitely want to review this might take you a couple times to to sink in. But those are going to give us those additional uh, do or die levels to be watching for here. So here is a visual representation of that. So you can see that time development again there. And then this is what we've been seeing a lot more of lately is a, a trend where we get the movement on the upside, just like what we saw in the ES this morning, where it pulls back and then we get this megaphone formation happening. So your original fib fan would be from this low to this high here. But what you might notice is that this pullback doesn't make it to a 76.4% level. And instead, it might hold like a 50% or even a 38.2 or 61.8% and then bounce and put in a higher high. But your higher high doesn't get a measured move. So compared to that first impulse move, the continuation struggles to make it to that and it gets stuck at a lower level. So then at that point, I can move my fib fan from here to here to dragging this over to here. And then that gives me my next fan level. This is like what I did earlier where we had that support at the 76.4% for a pivot with that extreme move on the downside. This is a higher risk way of, of looking at and using a FIB fan. It does bounce here most of the time, but we want to look at other factors that are coming into play, such as the trend placement of this correction or this pullback here. So for example, if this is an extended downtrend and it's broken that downtrend channel, and then you get this pullback, well, this whole zone ends up being your first correction, which is a time correction because you've got a megaphone. So if you divide that in half, you've got basically this horizontal time correction overall. That's a really good zone for a continuation on the upside. On the other hand, if this had been uh, an extreme uptrend over here, and you get your first break on the downside, and now you're seeing this happening, that's not as likely to be a good zone for a buy setup. So trend placement is, is really important, and then dropping down and using your smaller time frames. So a more common way that I would use this would be for this to come up and then go and create a nice two wave correction. First wave into like a six, the 61.8%, second wave into 76.4%. This is going to be a lower risk type of entry, higher probability of success on the upside. So you're going to find that that's going to be easier to recognize as a newer or a novice trader if you're just starting to use Fibonacci fans in your trading. And this particular zone here, if this was a downtrend, this would be what I would call a phoenix. 
it is your first correction in a new uptrend. So you're rising from the ashes, but you can use it as a bull flag zone too if there was already another correction down there as well. But that's a little bit of a more typical way of how we would use the, the FIB bands. But it's also a zone that you can use as a target level. So if you took a reversal off of the high up here, for example, and a lot of times this will have a two wave measured move. It didn't quite do that on this chart, but that is a good zone of where you're getting these rounded highs coming into play. So you can get a nice channel break. So your FIB fan can serve as a support level too as a target and not just a level that you're looking for it to go and reverse. It's common to get little retests of this. You can see a really rapid whiplash retest of it here after the close. My guess is something like earnings or something or news came out after hours that caused that swing. The stronger something comes into a supporter resistance level, the more give that supporter resistance level has. But I would still consider this to be holding just because of how intense the momentum was as it came back down into that zone. Interesting thing here again with that, of course, is if we go and use our Fibonacci price retracement levels, you're looking at these core retracement levels here where you got the 38.2%, 50%, 76.4%. And then this comes back to the 23.6%. So you've got that Fib retracement level corresponding with that Fib fan. So you've got both of those things coming together again. So it's again, that double whammy as far as the bears go, helps support the price action at that level. And the fact that it kind of rounds off a little bit into it, that's gonna help get that momentum going too. I have looked at basically, <laughs> every single major indicator under the sun in the last, gosh, 24 years or so that I've been trading. And it's always just come back to Fibonacci. I don't even use moving averages in my trading. They're a, just an initial, a, an additional type of support or resistance, but you don't want to base your trading on a moving average as like your key indicator. We want to be building these patterns. So this particular, you know, megaphone type of formation again, look at how well that FIB fan serves as support. And what's so interesting is that even later on down the line, it still continues to serve as a support level when it comes back and retraces it. And then since it breaks it, that becomes a resistance level at that point. So this could even go and flip and change momentum. You could take a FIB fan from that low to this high and get like this as a 61.8% FIB fan, this as a 76.4 and end up with a short setup, reversing your trend back over there. And that would be a pretty typical usage of that fan, just kind of flipping it around. You could also look at support here by taking your FIB fan from this low to your high here, because this has so many back and forth swings that that tells me that that's about an average momentum move. So an average momentum moves has a lot of overlap usually with kind of these shorter bursts of upside. So I would know that a fan from here to here that's gonna be a good zone to watch for, especially if this hooks up with, since it is about a 50% retracement, if this hooks up with a 50% FIB fan, then a 76.4% level is gonna be a really good support level. This might hook up with a 61.8% too. In fact, in this case it would, but um, that would give you additional support levels to again, watch for those do or die points. So, maybe like the, a shoulder for if this was like an inverse head and shoulders, if your other shoulder is, you know, off to the side over there, that could be a zone to watch for, for a buy setup. Yeah. 
Here's another example where we've got a little bit of a stronger move to start with. Could be about average, it's a little bit stronger than average. So initially you could go and take your fifth band from here to here. And then as this is going into range and you see a slightly higher high, at that point, I move my fib band from here to over to here. So originally, this could have given a two-way correction like this and gone. And this could have been like a 76.4% right here, maybe like a 50% fib band here, if I'm using this initial move from the um, low to the high. But since it does the slightly higher high here before it actually does the second major pullback, that tells me that at that point, I want to go and I want to shift my fib fan from here to that high. And then that is going to give me the next level that I want to use as a support. And we've been seeing a lot of this kind of bigger megaphone type of action recently in the markets. So we were using it a lot. A more typical way, of course, would be getting a nice two wave correction. And those certainly happen. They've just not been as common. Actually, if we look at the NASDAQ right now, we've got a more typical two-way correction. That ES trade that I took right after the close there, well, when the market reopened, that was another example that was kind of closer to average. Let's see. This, this chart is a micro, but that should work too. Let's see. Down on the five second chart. Clear this and show it to you. Uh, the link that David put in there, that is for those of you that use NinjaTrader because NinjaTrader does not have um, built in fans. So if you want to add them to your charts, that's what you need to do. So here is the NASDAQ. So the typical way that we would do the fib fan here would be straight from here to here. Now this is still pretty strong momentum because you've got a really sharp start to it and a sharp move over here. And when this pulls back, it pulls back more than 50% of the move, but it does it in a shorter period of time than that first initial upside. So another factor that we would be looking for for continuation on the upside is if this is your upside move, let's say this last 30 minutes, typically what we want to see is for the correction to be between 30 to 60 minutes. So if this is pulling back into fan support faster, you can still get a bounce off of that level, but it doesn't have the full time development yet. So this would be an example of where I would want to go and look at a potential for moving that fib fan. And I actually like it better on the full NASDAQ chart. Hold on a second. Then over here, but I'll show you what that movement would look like here. So we don't have a double top to use to adjust that band. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this first two wave correction and now we're going to move that fan to hook up this first low with 61.8 because it pulled back more than 50%. So this is um, one of the advanced ways that I use my fib band. And again, very teachable. I wasn't planning on adding it into class here, but since we have a live example of it, I will. So that gives you your 76.4% here. So this becomes that next level of support that we, you would use for buy setup. Now at this point, your time development is one-to-one. -one. So your upside to your sideways move. So this becomes a level that you can use for an initial trigger, but we're still really only getting one major swing that means there's still room for this to do a second swing. So if your fan here is a little bit lower, you can hook that up so that ships along right under there. And then that's going to provide you your next support zone. So you know that how much give you need in it. So we pull it down, hook that low up right there. 
and that becomes our next support. So we're making some adjustments, but we're doing them in a very technical pattern. So these are some of the ways that I will do those advanced movements with the fib band. So you get the basic fib band when you're going from your low to your high. But again, if this is more extreme momentum, this was where the 76.4% fan was, but it couldn't fully get going off of that. And that had to do with the other aspects of that development. So you're learning not just how to use those FID fans, but you're also looking at other things. So for example, distancing between our lows. If we've got a low here and price begins to shift, that also becomes a zone that we can start to look for a new setup at too. And if you look at this pivot here, well, that wasn't quite a one-to-one -one zone. Slightly over one-to-one -one is better than under one-to-one. -one. So if you looked at development as a head and shoulders, this is too early right here because the spacing is shorter here, shorter on B than it is for A. And we would want it to be equal or a little bit larger in order to give us that next level. And when it doesn't go at that level, you take that first correction, you double it out, and that gives you your next steward's eye zone, which now is at the adjusted fib fan. And then these fan levels going higher are gonna serve as resistance levels as they continue to develop. And your stop would be able to progress under it in those early stages. And then as it moves higher, you can go and tighten up your stops, of course. But this is a good you know, live example of, it. in practice, it just incorporates some of the more advanced um, ways that I use the FIB fan than are shown in my PowerPoint. So here's a, a typical first initial adjustment. Again, using that main move and then pulling it over to the second move. And another do or die point, since you've got a low here, that measured spacing, this would be another do or die point. So this could go and go in and do a second correction, lasting about the same amount as that first correction. And you could get another trigger point over here. Again, slightly over 100% is better than slightly under 100%. So I would look at right about here as another setup zone if this went into a longer trading range or a longer correction. So that fan there would be where I would wanna see another setup taking place. And then that 23.6, that is a, a good resistance level. And if it hits it really fast, like we have here, the measured move is a good target level, but if it hits that upper 23.6 really fast, it's usually going to bounce and retest it. So if you've got a really smooth sailing move all the way up into there, your initial impulse might be to take profits. Mine is I might take partials, but I'm also gonna look for more on the position. And that might mean taking partials and then getting back in on a smaller time frame to continue that move and playing with it in, in that direction as well. And then the last thing I wanna share with you, again, this can help you figure out when a break is too early. So a lot of traders are like, oh, I'm gonna look for a two wave correction and that's gonna give me a buy trigger. Well. I talked about a few things. First of all, your time development, one to one is here. So this is too early. So even if that was a 76.4% FIB fan right there, that's still gonna be too early because of the time development aspect. So in this particular one, you would wanna go and you would wanna pull that FIB fan to over here. And then you would be looking for a pullback into the 76.4, ideally like, an inverse head and shoulders. If we just left it here though, if you don't get that fib fan support, that support would be about, your 76.4% would be right about here. Probably my guess is it's right where it did this little pop 
and then came back down because that's about a 76.4% um, price retracement as well. So my guess is that this is where that fan level is. And I'm really good at estimating these on charts. I do it live every day. Um, so if you see me do live classes, you'll, you'll, you'll see that in action. But if the momentum is, you know, substantially stronger than average, it might only do like a little pop there, especially if you're still in a bigger downtrend. But that would be the zone of where you'd want that bounce to happen. But if we just left things where they are, that fan is going to become a resistance level. And we see that over and over again, where the trend placement just isn't good for it as a reversal pattern, you know, to get going and turned around on the upside. But what it does is it serves as a level that you can get into a short or a continuation on the short. So for example, on the one here, you've got your low and then you've got these rounding off of the highs happening. So it comes in, it hits the FIB fan really hard. Again, it's about a 76.4% retracement. So it's a good zone to get a bounce, but you don't know if it's going to just do a small bounce like what we saw on the previous slide or if it's going to manage to do a bigger bounce. So a lot of times I'll take these and I'll be really aggressive with the management um, that's what I was this morning, for example, when I, I first went into it, was just looking at it as an initial pop off of that support level where if it then had a smaller time frame, like a retest, for example, is going to have a better chance of doing an, a, a stronger bounce. Like that's what happened here. It hit it, it popped, and then immediately tried it again. And then your fans are serving as resistance. But as far as this upside move, then compared to the correction, that, that's really short. So if you're doubling it out, if we wanted to get like a nice bull flag or shallow phoenix, I would want it to go to over here before we got a continuation. So taking that and going into a longer base basically would help get that going more strongly. So if it held the low right here, bounced up like this, went into another correction like that, back into the Fib fan again, that would be a good zone where we would actually have a good chance of getting a strong move because this is so gradual. So it goes gradual, more gradual, strong especially if this is stronger on the downside here, it creates what I call a shallow phoenix. So this would be a do or die point, but it couldn't get enough of a bounce to come in and do a more gradual pullback. So when it broke the fan instead, that fan level serves as resistance. So I'm often using that fan as a short trigger as well when it gives way, um, usually just because of where it is in a larger uh, trend. Here's another example. In this case, there wasn't even a reaction off of that fan. You had kind of a steadier move, a little bit at the 50%, not too much at 61.8%, and really nothing at that 76.4. So probably the trend placement was bad on a larger time frame. So if this was going to trigger a buy, you would want to see that channel break and confirm pretty quickly here. Instead, that fan is serving as a resistance level. So we would usually see this type of action earlier in a new downtrend or you know, somewhere where it's kind of mid-range and there's not a whole lot of larger time frame support at that level. Here was another example. Whoops, sorry about that. Right here. So again, it kind of came through it really quickly off of this head and shoulders here. So this would be a level that you would be watching for if you're short off the head and shoulders as a possible zone of support um, coming into that level. But I wouldn't be using it as a buy signal at that point because again, our upside compared to our correction, that would be hitting too early. So we're not looking at good enough time development for that to trigger a buy setup at that point. Now, if this had held a pivot low here, I would have hooked up the 61.8% FIB fan with that low and then looked for 
this to do like a bounce and form a bigger continuation like that. And that would have been better. So breaks the support. Now that becomes a key level of resistance instead. All right, gang, so here's the link again for Trade Tracker. Um, that is my FibFan tool. But if you want to learn more about my style of market analysis, I actually have a three and a half hour mentoring program that's on demand that goes into all of my building blocks. So the building blocks that I use to put together the strategies like what you saw here, like what you saw me um, from my trades today, are described in detail in that three and a half hour class. And you can go back and watch that as many times as you want. And it's going to show you breakdowns of how I break down trends, trend development, like some of the little tips that I gave in today's class, uh, how I look at time development, again, like what you saw in today's class, but going into more detail. And I'm also going to show you the specifics of uh, my favorite trading strategy as well. And some um, aspects of overcoming the emotional obstacles of trading. Really, emotions in trading come down to confidence and having the confidence in the pattern. So having the confidence of saying, hey, this FIB fan, it has a really high probability of holding because it also has these other building blocks coming together at the same spot. That is what that course goes and dives into. So you've got 24, 25 years of trading experience built into this course here. And it is laid out as I would towards new to intermediate traders. So some basics of technical analysis are good to have, but um, it's pretty straightforward. I, I don't tend to get too difficult in some of these earlier classes, although you'll see aspects of some more advanced things like what I talked about here today as well, um, as far as, you know, how do I move the fans, things like that, that you can dive into in greater detail at a later date. But having those basics to start with, that's just an incredible uh, starting point for any strategy. So ma no matter if you're using my system of trading, if you're incorporating things like Sunny Bands, like uh, Sunny has um, with her trading, if you're adding these as well, it's just going to give you an even stronger pattern, stronger setup. All right, you guys, so thanks for having me here and letting me wrap up your trading day or your trading evening. And David, thanks again as well.